half man, half bull, Minotaur was the most famous and most gruesome monster in Greek mythology. I'm sure most of you know how a Minotaur looks like, but for those who don't, basically he had the body of a man but the head of a bull. So who was Minotaur? How did he come to be? And what is the story about the labyrinth and his eventual demise at the hands of Theseus? Hello everyone, I am Momas Najmi and today I have for you the story of Minotaur and the labyrinth of Crete. But before we start, I would like to thank you all for clicking and viewing this episode and others on my podcast. If you like this episode as well, please be sure to give it a like and share with others and also subscribe to the channel for more content. Alright, now that's out of the way, let's travel into the maze of Greek mythology once again. The Story of Minotaur The story begins in Crete with the death of the sacred king Asterius. Asterius did not have any children during his life with Europa. However, Europa had children with Zeus before her marriage with Asterius and one of them was Minos. After the death of Asterius, Minos claimed the right to the throne of Crete, declaring that it was the divine will of the gods. And to prove it, he prayed to Poseidon to send him a bull from the sea, which he would later sacrifice in his name. Poseidon sent him a great white Cretan bull, and Minos was crowned king. But because Minos found the bull to be too beautiful and majestic, he decided to sacrifice another bull in its place. This angered Poseidon dearly, and out of his anger, He made Minos' wife, Pesaphae, fall in love with the Cretan white bull. Incapable of resisting the temptation, Pesaphae convinced Daedalus, a master craftsman and artist, to fashion her a wooden cow hollowed out from inside. She then hid inside the wooden cow and thus made it with the Cretan bull that she was made to fall in love with by Poseidon. The result of their unnatural union was Minotaur, named Asterius after his grandfather. Of course, Minos was not pleased. He was so appalled with his offspring that he ordered Daedalus, the same master craftsman, to build a structure in Gnosis, so elaborate that not only would it trap the monster within it, but it would also make it difficult for anyone going in to find their way back outside. And Daedalus planned out and made a labyrinth, a vast underground maze of hallways and passages. Soon after, Minotaur was put in the labyrinth, where the center became his dark dwelling place. The Labyrinth of Crete and the Death of Minotaur As the labyrinth was so complicated that no one could make their way out of it, King Minos would imprison his enemies in there only to be caught and eaten by the Minotaur. Son of Minos, Androgeus once went to Athens to participate in the Panathenaic Games. During the marathon he was killed by the very white Cretan bull that had impregnated his mother, Pesaphae. Minos had a mighty naval fleet, and with that he laid siege on Athens against Aegeus, the king of Athens, to avenge the death of his firstborn. When the siege carried on for too long, Minos 
urged his father Zeus to help. Zeus unleashed a plague on Athens. To end the plague, Minos demanded terms of surrender with Aegeus, which Aegeus, as instructed by the oracle, agreed. Among them was a demand for blood tribute. Athens was to provide Minos with seven young men and seven young women from Athens every year to be sacrificed by being thrown in the labyrinth as food for Minotaur that would serve as compensation for the death of his son. This went on for two years and the Minotaur tore those poor Athenian souls apart within the labyrinth. But in the third year, Theseus, son of Aegeus, a prince of Athens, decided that he would be one of the seven men sent for sacrifice. And while in the labyrinth, he would kill the Minotaur and save the lives of future Athenian youth. King Aegeus tried his best to dissuade his son from this task. But his mind was set, he would slay the Minotaur. Theseus promised his father that he would turn the sails of the boat white if he were returning to Athens victorious. That way his father would see in advance and know that he is well. And if he were not amongst the living anymore, the sails would be black. Upon arrival to Crete, Theseus announced to King Minos that he intends to kill the beast once and for all. But Minos knew that even if Theseus killed Minotaur, there was no chance of him finding his way out of the labyrinth. He put him along with other Athenians in a dungeon to be put in the maze in the morning. Meanwhile, Princess Ariadne, daughter of King Minos, saw Theseus and fell in love with him. So she came to him while he was in the dungeon. And thereupon she gave him a sword which he could use to defeat the beast and also, as instructed by Didylus, the inventor of the labyrinth, she gave him a thread and told him to unravel it as he went deeper and deeper in the labyrinth so he knows his way back. And in return, she asked for him to take her to Athens with him when he journeys back as his bride, to which he agreed. When the guards came in the morning, he volunteered to be the first and so they threw Theseus in unceremoniously via a gate that shut behind him suddenly. Theseus had hidden the sword and the ball of thread in the folds of his tunic. He tied one end of the thread to a loose nail in the woodwork of the gate and kept unwinding the thread as he searched the labyrinth for the Minotaur. Theseus slowly and carefully, in the cold and dark caves, filled with the stench of sweat, flesh and dirty fur, tried looking for the Minotaur. He felt movement in the dark, a bellowing echo in the distance. He was not alone. Then all of a sudden, as if out of nowhere, the Minotaur was upon Theseus. He swiped wildly at him with his sword, but the Minotaur knocked him to the floor with a powerful blow. Theseus rolled to his side as the Minotaur struck the cave floor, the smooth path splintering into rubble beneath him. Theseus scrambled into a crouch, sweeping his sword through the air, but it hit nothing. He could hear the beast's roar echoing back at him from the cave walls. He struggled backwards until he felt the wall of the cave behind him and flailed blindly in a wide arc. His sword hit flesh, but he could not bite through the Minotaur's leathery skin. The Minotaur grabbed hold of his ankles and dragged Theseus through the ruined ground, then lifted him bodily and held him aloft, ready to slam him against the wall. Twisting in the beast's grasp, Theseus plunged his sword into the soft place under the Minotaur's arm. It roared in pain and let go of its victim, who fell headfirst into the rocks 
and sand. The Minotaur, however, was no more. A Hero's Journey Home After defeating the Minotaur, Theseus followed the unwounded thread back to the door from which he was thrown into the labyrinth. However, that door wasn't designed to let anyone out. It could only be opened from the other side. Much to his delight, Ariadne opened the door. The Cretan court had left long before, after witnessing what had happened. But Ariadne waited behind to let Theseus out. Theseus, helped by the labyrinth guards, was then taken to the court of King Minos. Minos was not pleased, but he also did not dare defy the slayer of the mighty beast. Theseus demanded for the Athenians to be released and be allowed to sail back to Athens with him, and Minos agreed reluctantly. Menos, angered by the events, did not watch them sail back home, and so he did not notice his daughter sailing to Athens with Theseus. Along the way, Theseus' boat stopped a while at Naxos, where all the Athenians saved celebrated along with the hero and the princess of Crete. After long hours of feasting and drinking, Ariadne fell asleep on the shore and did not return to the port when it sailed again to Athens. Theseus noted it way too late, and in his anguish, he forgot to change the sails of his boat to white, as he promised his father. Another version of the story mentioned that Theseus left Ariadne on the shore on purpose, which is more plausible than not making sure everyone boarded the boat. Otherwise, having taken Ariadne to Athens, it might have given another cause to Minos to attack Athens. Either way, Theseus forgot to change his sails to white, and so they remained black, signaling from afar that he did not survive the ordeal. At Cape Sunion, King Aegeus was eagerly waiting to see the sails of the boat, so he knows the fate of his son. When he saw the sails to be black, he assumed his son to have died. Stricken with grief, he jumped into the waters and committed suicide. And so the sea where he died is called Aegean Sea. Well, that is the end of the story of Minotaur and his death at the hands of Theseus. I hope you enjoyed listening to this snippet of ancient Greek mythology. If you like it enough, please don't forget to like and share this episode. And also, consider subscribing to this channel for updates regarding more episodes. Until next time, take care, be good and thank you so much for listening.